Hey there, and welcome back to another video on Englishes around the world. In today's video, we're going to take a closer look at the sounds of English in Britain. Now, in this video series, I've been referring to British English already a couple of times, and you probably know from your own experience what it's like when you hear someone speak and you think, okay, that is a British accent. Maybe you've taken a linguistics class that has explicitly addressed pronunciation differences across British English and, for example, American English. So you're familiar with pairs like tomato, tomato, dance and dance, car and car and so on and so forth. The main point of this video is that when we talk about the sounds of British English, we are not just talking about one particular accent but rather we're facing a large group of accents that have certain characteristics in common, but that also differ in many respects. So there's a lot of variation in British English that I want to focus on in this video. I'm afraid that today in this video, we won't get to the bottom of how many varieties of British English there are or how exactly they differ in terms of not only their pronunciation, but also their vocabulary and their morphosyntactic characteristics. So the plan for today is much more modest. Uh, all I want to do here is take a data example that illustrates how the sounds of two varieties of British English can differ. And for that example, we are going to compare a specific type of linguistic sound, namely vowels, from two speakers that come from different areas in Britain. We have one speaker from Renfrewshire in Scotland. I'm going to pronounce it again. It's Renfrewshire, yeah? And another from Southampton, um, Southampton, England. The speakers have been recorded recently, so they're both young male adults, and they represent British English as it is spoken right now. In this video, I'm going to play you recordings of these speakers and we're going to isolate and focus on specific vowels and we're going to measure and plot them in order to show how they are similar and different. There's a second element of this video that is meant to show you what you can actually do when you have lots of sound comparisons of this kind. Yeah, so if you have a large collection of recordings from a large group of speakers from different areas, then you can do certain types of analysis with that. So ultimately, we're not so much interested in individual pronunciation differences between two speakers, but rather we would like to know how larger geographical regions can be divided up into smaller areas that are then representative of a certain dialect or a certain accent. Where exactly do the boundaries lie? What dialects can be grouped together? What are the main differences? And so on and so forth. So in order to address all that, I will show you data from the Linguistic Atlas of England, which showcases uh, what can be done when you actually have a lot of pronunciation data. Okay, so without further ado, uh, let's get started. And the good news here is that you can actually do at home on your computer everything that I'm going to show in this video. So if you want to follow along and try out the sound comparisons yourself, the first step would be to go to a website that is called Dynamic Dialects ACUK. And that is a fantastic resource for what we're trying to do here today. It's an interactive articulatory accent database that has both sound and video, and it has super fancy ultrasound tongue imaging. So if you ever wanted to look at someone's tongue while they're actually pronouncing a word, this is your chance. So I can only recommend that you log on to that website and check out what's there. Right. Um, so the information on that website concerns Englishes worldwide, but today we are going to focus on the British Isles only. So the red dots that you see here, uh, those represent speakers that have been recorded and you can actually click on each of them to listen to the recordings and to watch the videos. Uh, we're going to focus on two varieties specifically. One variety that we're going to look at is English as spoken in Renfrewshire, Scotland. The speaker is male and in his 30s. And if you click on the dot, 
you can actually see that there are several vowel recordings. So the vowels that appear in the words kit, dress, trap, lot, strut, foot, and so on and so forth. And then as a bonus, there is also a stretch of spontaneous speech. That's the last sound that you see there. And we're going to listen to that in just a second. Okay, um, the second variety that we'll be using for a comparison is Southampton, England. So essentially we are comparing north against south in this video, highlighting some of the most important similarities and differences. Okay, so let's go and listen to our speaker from Renfrewshire. Um, here is the spontaneous recording I transcribed for what the speaker is saying. So let me play this for you so that you have an impression. Fall back into my to my natural accent, but I think I'm fairly good at, at standing up and, and, and having a good idea about what's coming up and how to how to make it how to make it understandable to whoever it is I'm speaking to. Okay. Uh, let's listen to that once more. Fall back into my to my natural accent, but I think I'm fairly good at, at standing up and, and, and having a good idea about what's coming up and how to how to make it how to make it understandable to whoever it is I'm speaking to. Okay, so that's enough for a first impression. Um, let's listen to our second speaker, our speaker from Southampton. Here is the transcript and uh, let me press play. And my best friend, she's watched it as well, so we've kind of grown up together watching One Tree Hill. And then she came up, she's from down south, and she came up here just to watch the last episode. Okay, also that I'm going to play one more time. And my best friend, she's watched it as well, so we've kind of grown up together watching One Tree Hill. Uh -huh. And then she came up, she's from down south, and she came up here just to watch the last episode. Okay, so um, if you want to, you can go back a little in this video and listen to the two speakers again and try to come up with three differences, three things that you think sound different in the way these speakers are pronouncing their words. So I suggest that you take a piece of paper, you take a few notes, and let me know in the comments what you wrote and if that corresponds to the sound differences that I'm going to discuss in the next minutes. All right, so as I said, uh, we will be looking specifically at vowels and how they are different across the two speakers. So what you see on this slide here is a vowel chart that has the main elements of the vowel system of British English. So we have high, mid and low vowels. Uh, the high vowels are high up, then the mid vowels are in the middle and the low vowels are at the bottom. Uh, and we have front and center and back vowels. Yeah, so a coordinate system of vowels, if you like. And um, well, uh, the words that you see in this chart, they correspond to how you and I would pronounce these vowels, roughly speaking. Yeah, so fleece, uh, that word has a vowel E in it. Uh, goose has an U in it. Foot has an U and so on and so forth. Yeah, so we have goat, lot, palm, strut, trap, nurse, dress, face, kit, and fleece. Right, so this vowel chart is not just a convenient arrangement, but it actually reflects what phoneticians call formants. Formants are frequency bands that you can measure when you have actual recordings of uh, words that contain these vowels. So formants are frequencies, so they are measured in the unit hertz. And the so-called first formant is on the y-axis, and it goes from about 200 hertz to 800 hertz. And note that the scale is sort of flipped upside down. It goes from top to bottom. So it's not your standard Cartesian coordinate system here but it is slightly inverted. Um, so that is the first formant, or also called F1. Then we have F2, the second formant, and that formant is on the x-axis, which is also inverted. So it goes from 600 hertz on the right to uh, 2400 hertz on the left. And um, well, 
uh, it basically captures the difference between back vowels and uh, front vowels. Right, so on this slide here, I have overlaid the vowel chart over a uh, coordinate system with actual numbers that lets you see F1 and F2. So you can see that, for example, fleece has an F1 uh, that is just ever so slightly above 200, so uh, around 240, and uh, its F2 is around 2400, okay? And we can do the same for goose, which is at about, um, well, 240, 250 F1, and then around 600 uh, F2. Okay, so in the next minutes, uh, we're going to do four comparisons. We will concentrate on three pure vowels, namely fleece, goose, and lot. And we will take one diphthong, namely mouth, okay? So mouth has an a ah that goes to an o, oh, mouth. And uh, if you did the little exercise of finding differences between the two varieties earlier, my guess is that you actually caught how the speaker from Renfrewshire pronounced words such as how uh, in a way that sounds rather different from the way I pronounce them, yeah? Uh, or the speaker from Southampton for that matter. Anyway, um, that's what we're going to do. And if we take a look on Wikipedia for a starting point, we actually find a nice overview chart for average vowel form and values for male speakers. And here the first one is an E. So the, the symbols there, they're, they're not exactly IPA, but uh, anyway. So the first one is the fleece vowel uh, and that has an F1 of 240 hertz and an F2 of 2400 hertz. So that is roughly speaking our expectation for the two speakers that we have. Yeah, So that's the baseline that we're going to use for our comparison. Let's listen to the two speakers once more. So here I have the sound from the dynamic dialect uh, web page. And both speakers in these recordings are saying the word fleece. And I'm going to play this for you. Yeah. So ultimately, our goal is going to be to plot these vowels into the vowel chart and to see if there is any difference between the speakers. But uh, to get us started, let's actually listen with our ears and see if we can hear any difference. Yeah. So I'm going to press play first uh, on our speaker from Renfrewshire. Fleece. Okay, and then our speaker from Southampton. Fleece. Fleece, okay. Um, right, so for the plotting, we basically need two things. Um, the first thing that we need uh, for the comparison, of course, is the actual data from the Dynamic Dialects webpage. Uh, and you can download that data from um, the page that is called Accent Chart, okay? So if you navigate to that Accent Chart page, it shows you this giant table with lots of sounds that you can play, yeah? So it has the uh, vowels in the columns. It starts with kit, dress, trap, and so on and so forth. And you need to uh, go all the way through fleece and then remember that column and then scroll all the way down to the speaker from Renfrewshire, and then you can click on that, and then you can actually download the uh, sound file. Actually, um, the page lets you download MP4 files that have both sound and video. And if you want to follow along here, you'll need to convert the MP4s into MP3 files, okay? There are online converters that let you do that in a, in, in a flash, really. So if you want to follow along, pause the video, download fleece, goose, lot, and mouth for both speakers, yeah, Renfrewshire and Southampton, and then convert those files into MP3 format, put them in a folder where you can find them, and then come back to the video and uh, go along with what we're doing on the next slide. Okay, right. So those files will be the first thing that you need for the comparison. 
The second thing that we need is a piece of software that is famous among linguists and that should be on everyone's machine. It's, it's so useful. Uh, you will never want to live without it again. It's called Prat. Yeah. And if you Google uh, Prat download, you will find a site that looks like this. Uh, and it lets you download Prod for whatever your operating system is. Yeah. So um, if you're working on a Mac, if you're working on a PC, you can find the version that works for you. Um, one uh, sad note here is that if you're watching this on a phone or on an iPad, uh, Prod unfortunately only works on computers. So if you're currently on your iPad, well, you'll need to use a different device. Maybe you have a mom or dad who still has a computer or you have a roommate who has one. So no, um, you, you'll just need to use a, an ordinary computer. Now, if you haven't done so already, please download and install Prod and uh, pause this video and then come back to it. And then we will open it and get started. OK. So what happens when you have installed Prod and open it for the first time is that a main window will open. And that main window, what you see on the, on the left here, gives you the opportunity to read files into Prod. Yeah? So you click Open. And from the menu that pops up, you choose Read from File. And then you can navigate to the MP3s from the Dynamic Dialects web page that you downloaded and converted earlier. Yeah. All right. So once this has been accomplished, the main window should list the files that you have loaded into Prod. Yeah. So uh, mine says Sound Renfrewshire Fleece, Sound Southampton Fleece, uh, Sound Renfrewshire Goose, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Okay. So if that looks the same way on your end, then that's already great. Um, and uh, you can now select any of those files. And uh, if you look on the right side of the main window, there is a panel with different things that you can do. Yeah. So you can, for example, play the sound or, uh, well, you can do all sorts of things that we won't go in uh, in this video. But one thing that we definitely want to do is view and edit. Yeah? So find the button that says view and edit and click on that. And if you have selected, uh, for example, the file that says uh, Renfrewshire Fleece, then a window should pop up that looks a little something like what you see on the right hand side of this slide. Yeah. So <clears throat> right. Uh, let's talk about this window. Yeah. So actually, uh, the window shows the speaker saying fleece uh, twice. Yeah. Once in ordinary speed and once uh, slowed down by, I think, 50% or so. So it sounds like fleece and then fleece. Yeah. So that's why you see these two uh, black blobs on, uh, on the graph on the right. Um, now, in the upper panel, you see a, well, an acoustic wave, basically, that shows the loudness of the recording. And uh, in the lower panel, you see what we are actually interested in. That is called a spectrogram. And that is the data that we're going to use for our comparison. Yeah? So we are interested in those spectrograms. Um, the window is actually clickable. And one thing that uh, Prod lets you do is that you can click into the bars below the spectrogram and that will play the sound. OK, that will play the sound that you're looking at. And there is even a cursor that that lets you know where exactly uh, you are in the recording when that sound plays. So if you have the window open on your computer, uh, please click into the fields below the spectrogram and you will hear the sound fleece pronounced by the speaker from Renfrewshire. OK, so we're basically there. We have our data and we just need to analyze it. And for that, we need to do two things. So first of all, we need to find the portion of the recording 
that is only the vowel, okay? So right now we have fleece and there's an F, there's an L sound, then there's the vowel that we're really interested in and after that there is the S of uh, fleece. So we need to isolate the vowel. That's going to be the first step here. So how can we do that? Um, vowels have a very specific look in the acoustic wave and also in the spectrogram. So you can actually, well, uh, you can actually recognize them not by listening, but just by looking at the spectrogram. And this actually is a fun exercise. When linguists, uh, when linguists get bored, they like to look at spectrograms and try to guess the words that are pronounced in those spectrograms. Um, so I don't know, if you're alone and you have a couple of hours to kill, why not look at a few spectrograms and guess the words uh, that the speaker pronounces and then you can press play and see if you actually made the right guess. Unfortunately, in this video, we don't have the time for that. Yeah, so we will try and isolate the vowel here as quickly as possible. And the way to do this, uh, well, let's look at the, um, at the acoustic wave. Their uh, vowels show a regular wavy pattern that is not all black, not all white, but rather it is black and white alternating. Okay, so if you see a regular kind of wavy pattern, that is very likely to be a vowel or a vowel-like sound, yeah? Um, in the spectrogram, you can recognize vowels by uh, dark bands that are relatively well-defined, okay? So you see them kind of in the background. There are certain spots that are much darker than all the rest. And Prat actually automatically recognizes these bands and represents them with red dots. So when those red dots are all over the place, like in the first couple of uh, seconds there in the, um, in the spectrogram, then uh, you know you're not looking at a vowel. Yeah? But when they form orderly lines, when the red dots line up nicely, that's when you're looking at a vowel. So that is something to look out for. But of course, um, there's actually no need to do either of that. You can just listen to the recording and select only the portion that sounds like a vowel, in this case, like an E sound. Yeah? So you can simply click into the window and then mark up the portion that you're interested in. And your window should look more or less like what you see on this slide. Right. Once this has been accomplished, we have almost reached our goal, okay? So you see that at the top of the window, there is a menu. It starts with file, edit, query, view, and so on and so forth. And um, almost at the far right, there is a little writer that says formant, okay? That is what we need right now. So I want you to click on that and a menu will appear that allows you to select the first format, okay? So that is what you see here. Um, so importantly, you need to have the vowel portion selected for that, or you need to have at least clicked into the vowel portion. So uh, the, the, the cursor needs to be active at that particular point in the recording. Now, here I have the average formant value for the portion that I selected, and that gives me a first formant value of 320 hertz, okay? So that is the F1 value. And, um, well, again, clicking on the formant uh, rider, I can select F2, and that gives me the second formant, in this case, a measurement of 2,315 hertz. So that means I have identified my F1 and F2 measurements for the fleece vowel of our speaker of uh, coming from Renfrewshire. So um, here again is the uh, full spectrogram with uh, our speaker saying fleece. Let me play this to you one more time so that we hear it again. Fleece. I'm gonna play this once more. Fleece. Okay, so you clearly hear the, the, the E type of vowel and uh, you see the um, 
first formant here, those are these red dots that line up. And the second formant, those are these red dots that line up. And uh, you see both of them form really nice and well-behaved lines. So uh, that is our first vowel that we're going to use for our comparison. Right, um, moving on, we're going to do the exact same thing for our speaker of Southampton. But before we do that, we will enter our measurement into the vowel chart. So here I have uh, inserted the blue Renfrewshire uh, fleece at around 300, what was it, 320 hertz F1 and about, uh, uh, yeah, three, 320 F1 and 2315, uh, give or take, F2. So, well, it's a front high vowel, no big surprises there. Um, and you and I would be pronouncing this word in a way that is similar enough to what our speaker from Renfrewshire is actually doing. Right, um, that means we can move on to Southampton. And here I'm doing the exact same thing and you at home should be doing the same. So if you've uh, loaded the Southampton fleece file into Prat, you can view and edit, you can find the vowel portion, you can call for F1 and F2, and you should receive measurements that are broadly in line with what you see here on this slide. So I have an F1 of 305 Hertz and an F2 of 2286. And that of course is more or less similar to what we had for Renfrewshire. Yeah? So North and South actually line up rather well with regard to the fleece vowel. So that is a similarity rather than a difference. Okay, um, you might say, okay, that's kind of boring. Why don't we pick something that has more of a difference or more of something of an unexpected result? Um, well, let's uh, have a look at the goose vowel, okay? So if we're looking at the Wikipedia uh, formants here, uh, Wikipedia states that for an average male voice, uh, the oo in goose has an F1 of 250 hertz. So it is a um, high vowel and it has an F2 of 595, meaning that it is a back vowel. Yeah, U, high back vowel, E, high front vowel. And uh, well, we're going to test this um, with our speakers from Renfrewshire and Southampton. And here I have the sound files where they say goose. And let me play this to you, okay? Here we have the speaker from Renfrewshire. Goose. Goose. And the speaker from Southampton. Goose. 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 Okay. Exactly. Uh, Scotland once more. Goose. 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 <laughs> and Southampton? Goose. 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 <laughs> okay. I don't know about you. That doesn't sound, that does not sound like goose. That sounds more like goose. Yeah. So uh, let's uh, load these sounds into Prat and let's check out their F1 and F2. And this is what I've done here for uh, the speaker from Renfrewshire. I have an F1 of 391, not exactly the 240 that was advertised on Wikipedia. And then the F2 is 1836, and that is nothing like the, what was it, um, 600 or so that, uh, I was, uh, that was indicated in the table from Wikipedia. So if we plot this into the vowel chart, yeah. Um, so when, when you and I are pronouncing goose like this, yeah, it's a high back vowel, but um, our speaker from Renfrewshire has massive 
OO fronting. Okay, so when you put, uh, when, when you take an OO vowel and uh, produce it further in the front of your mouth, um, it comes out as OO, yeah, goose. Uh, and uh, the Scottish speaker even has a shortened variant of that, so it's goose rather than goose, yeah. The speaker from Southampton says it more in the way of uh, goose. Right, so uh, the uh, the formants, uh, 391 and 1836, that corresponds to roughly this position here. So yeah, uh, as I said, it's, it's massively fronted. And uh, well, that's an interesting feature of, um, of Renfrewshire English. Right, let's check out uh, our speaker from Southampton. And uh, we actually have something similar going on, though not quite the same thing, yeah? So we have an F1 of 316 and an F2 of 2026. So if anything, um, the fronting is even more pronounced in this speaker, yeah? So this is uh, something like almost a, yeah, um, an E or I type uh, vowel that you would expect in that position, except of course it's rounded, the lips are rounded. So if you try to, uh, if you try to pronounce an E and then round your lips, okay? So I'm going to do E, so that, no, you know, you notice how the sound is gradually changing from e to u yeah e -u. Uh, i'm doing nothing else with my uh, vocal apparatus i'm really just using the lips and that is what you get uh in this case here all right so we found massive u fronting both for a northern variety and a southern variety excellent let's move on to another vowel the lot vowel and here uh, our baseline, our expectation from Wikipedia is 500 for the first formant and 700 for the second formant. So let's give this a reality check. Um, let's listen first to our two speakers. So here I have the speaker from Renfrewshire. Lot. 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 Okay, that sounds more or less, dare I say, normal. Uh, here we have the speaker from Southampton. Lot. 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 Yeah, indeed. Um, okay, so um, you can do this at home. Load the files into Prod. Uh, find the vowel portion. Check out F1 and F2. And what this gives me for the uh, Renfrewshire speaker is an F1 of 604 and an F2 of uh, 1031. So if I insert that into the vowel chart, well, this means that lot uh, shows up more or less where we would expect it. Um, now, here maybe my own pronunciation is, is kind of um, deviating from what Wikipedia would, uh, would propose to us. So um, I pronounce that vowel a lot further back and further down. So uh, <clears throat> depending on uh, who I'm talking to or what I say, you will find me saying things like, yeah, that's a lot, yeah? With an ah type sound. Anyway, um, moving on to the speaker from Southampton, we get similar measurements. So uh, an F1 of 576 and an F2 of 914. If you're doing this at home, you should be getting numbers that are roughly in the ballpark. And um, so the Southampton speaker is just a little bit further back, yeah, <clears throat> but essentially in the same position. So again, that's a similarity across a northern variety and a southern variety. We're coming to the fourth uh, comparison that I want to draw here. And that would be the diphthong that you find in the word mouth, okay? So when I say mouth, the um, <clears throat> two sounds that are in there, 
Well, it starts with an ah type sound and then it goes up to a mid back vowel. So an o or u depending on um, my mood and what I've had for breakfast and so on and so forth. But let's listen to what our speaker from Ranfusha is doing here. I'm going to press play on this. Mouth. Mouth. Okay, that I need to hear again. Mouth. Mouth. What is that even? Mouth. Mouth. So if no one is listening, uh, wherever you're watching this, you know, why don't you go ahead, listen to this and try to the best of your ability to say this. Yeah, Mouth. Mouth. Um, it's not a diphthong that exists in um, any kind of language that, that I am using regularly. Uh, let's listen to the speaker from Southampton. Mouth. 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 Okay. A lot closer to what, uh, what, what I would be doing myself. Mouth. Mouth. Okay. Mouth. Right, let's measure these diphthongs. And since diphthongs are sort of uh, combinations of vowels, you know, you start with one vowel and you end in another vowel, we have to do two measurements. Yeah, uh, two measurements for F1 and F2 for the first vowel and for the second vowel. And this is what I have done here. Um, when you look at the red lines, there you can actually see um, <clears throat> uh, that the lines aren't straight, okay? But rather, there's a development. And um, okay, so in, in this version of the uh, spectrogram, I have uh, marked up the, uh, the first vowel, yeah? And the, the second vowel is what you see at the very end uh, here yeah so <clears throat> and you see the gradation from the first to the second um, we'll see this uh, in a lot more detail in the second speaker from uh, Southampton yeah okay but if we zoom in on the vowel portions for the first vowel and the second vowel and we take measurements for F1 and F2 for those two, we get a movement uh, in the first formant from uh, about 536 hertz, uh, which then lowers to 391. Yeah, so we are slightly higher up here in the first portion and then it goes down. Okay, and then in the second formant, we go up ever so slightly. Yeah, so the first vowel is around 1550 and then it goes up 100 hertz to 1650. Now if you have photographic memory and you looked at the Wikipedia vowel chart earlier you will already know what vowels these uh, measurements these values correspond to. I'll play the mouth sound from our speaker once more to refresh your memory mouth mouth um okay are you ready this is it it goes from an e eh type sound to something of an e uh type sound yeah so um both are, are are mid vowels and um well we're going from a central or center front vowel to something that is relatively fronted yeah so it's really well th this is the um rising f2 that we see here yeah so it goes from something that is centered to something that is further in the front uh when i saw this i mean i i, I knew what to expect but still i was uh, quite surprised to see this Let's compare this to our speaker from Southampton. Yeah, so here you see these nicely uh, sloping formant values. Yeah, the lines of red dots that are going down, and uh, this 
corresponds to an F1 that starts at around 900, so that's quite high to, uh, well, it descends to around 500. And F2 also starts high at around 1,463 and then goes down to about 830. Uh, let me play this to you one more time. Mouth. 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 Okay. <clears throat> and when we plot this into the graph, we get something that, well, if you've taken a phonetics class, uh, then an RP kind of ow diphthong looks kind of like this. Okay, it starts at the bottom, at the center of the vowel chart, and then it goes up towards the back. That's what it does. And uh, well, these measurements here correspond to that, but uh, you, well, it's just so amazing how the same diphthong really, yeah can manifest itself in such different ways yeah okay excellent so those are our four comparisons if you have uh, done this at home and your results differ from what i have presented here let me know in the comments yeah uh, so we can check this out together um, other than that um, you could also continue the comparison. So I would encourage you to go back to the Dynamic Dialects website and uh, download further sounds from these two speakers. For example, Kit, Trap and Prize. And you can measure F1 and F2 and place your measurements side by side in the vowel chart. So I'll leave a link below this uh, video where you can actually download the uh, slides that I have shown here and so uh, you can use that to tinker around with the vowel chart and the measurements. Um, kit and trap are simple vowels. Prize of course is again a diphthong and uh, yeah that should make for an interesting comparison between the uh, speaker from Scotland and the speaker from England. Right so much for our empirical comparison here, our data fest that we have done. I want to finish uh, with something that is slightly more big picture. Um, so ultimately measuring vowels is fun, but we want to get at deeper questions, of course. Yeah? So ultimately we would like to investigate how different varieties of British English for that matter, uh, differ across different regions and how we can divide Britain up into regions where certain accents are spoken or certain dialects are spoken. And um, linguists have been engaged in this kind of work for a long time. So one particular piece of work that I'd like to briefly present here is the Linguistic Atlas of England, which contains a lot of maps that show how words are pronounced differently across different areas in Britain. Uh, this atlas was published in 1978, but work on it con uh, began actually much earlier. So uh, <clears throat> it was an effort that started after World War II. Uh, people from Zurich were actually involved in that work. Um, yeah, so it's based on a survey uh, that was carried out with actual speakers uh, between the 1950s and 1960s. And the respondents that were sought out uh, during that time were over 60 years of age at the time. So they would have been born around 1900. Yeah. So uh, if you're watching this, I'm, I'm checking the statistics for uh, how old you guys are. And that means these speakers are about 100 years older than you are, yeah, just for reference. And they lived in villages, so the uh, linguists explicitly made a point to go out to villages that had preserved the traditional dialects, and they collected about 400,000 data points. So, no, this, is, this was not done in a couple of afternoons. This was a lot of work. And of course, doing the recordings and transcribing what you hear, um, 
that is only the beginning of the work because in the end what you want to come up with is a map that shows how words are pronounced in different ways across different areas of um, uh, Britain and here we have a map that represents how the word butter is uh, pronounced and each little point that you see on this map I mean maybe you, you have to uh, enlarge your screen uh, so that there are little little specks on the map yeah and each speck corresponds to a uh, village where linguists went and um, well uh, asked speakers to pronounce this word this word and lots of others yeah and they took notes and transcribed what the speaker said phonetically and you see that uh, what emerges if we're looking at the big picture is a split between uh, an area in the north and an area in the south. So we have butter against something like butter. Yeah. So this would be a short uh. <clears throat> and uh, yeah. Uh, so that might lead you to think, okay, well, so they did all this work and they found what two dialects? Is that it? Well, that's not it because all vowels sort of behave differently. So here we see a map for the word kettle. And you see that, well, again, there is a north-south split. Yeah, so this line here is, is actually a very, very interesting border. Uh, I might put a link below to a video that you might be interested in. Um, so it's not quite the same, even though the broad structures are similar. Uh, so we have uh, a large area where this word is pronounced kettle and then there are areas where the e eh sound is raised to kittle yeah okay now here we have a map that is a lot more messy this is uh, the word light yeah so we have the i diphthong and um, well <clears throat> I'll let you look at all of these pronunciations yourself. So there is I, the way that, that I'm pronouncing this right now. There is OI, yeah. There is A, there is E. Late up north, yeah. So um, it seems that with regard to this diphthong, there is a lot of variability in the south so you can't really say well there are two dialects north and south and that's it rather uh, you have to take all of these words into account and then um, be guided by that in distinguishing different areas that converge on certain similar patterns let's look at one more uh, word here foot and here you see that well in the south there seems to be unity more or less yeah so we have the short o uh, in this large area here a um, bit of fronting down here u, yeah <clears throat> and then lots of strange variants up here yeah so um, here's another one that sort of patterns similarly moon yeah, and if we compare foot and moon, I would invite you to go back and forth and kind of figure out what is going on with those two. If uh, those reflect similar dialect areas or whether there are distinctions that are present in one but not in the other. Yeah, so if your job, you know, put yourself in the shoes of a linguist who tries to establish, well, how many dialects are there? spoken in Britain well and you have this material yeah what do you do um, in this day and age you'd probably go to your uh, statistician and hand them the maps and go okay so now you figure this out with some kind of fancy statistics but um, back in the day you know that wasn't really uh, an option so linguists had to do this in a more qualitative way anyway um, I'm going to finish here with uh, two maps. 
one that shows you the traditional dialects of uh, England that have been established on this kind of data, the atlas data that I just showed you, uh, based on speakers that have been born around 1900. <clears throat> and uh, to the right, you see a map of modern dialects. So there are, again, a couple of similarities across the two maps. So this line that I was talking about earlier, yeah, that seems to be present in both maps. But um, apart from that, there are lots of changes um, that have to do, um, well, with uh, social factors, of course. Um, speakers today in England are a lot more mobile than they used to be uh, in the olden days. So the traditional dialects have been established on the basis of speakers who stayed in place for pretty much all their lives. That is no longer the case uh, for speakers of modern day dialects. But nonetheless, you see that a lot of the older distinctions are actually still in place in a similar uh, form. Anyway, this was meant to be just, you know, a first taste of um, how dialects in a place such as England can be studied. Um, I hope you had fun with the vowel measurements and I hope you continue with some of that at home. Uh, that's it for today. And I look forward to seeing you in one of the next episodes on Englishes around the world. That's it. Bye bye and uh, see you soon.